For cat lover Shaq, who lives in a Turu rental flat in Boon Lay with his mother, time is the biggest barrier to getting his three cats sterilized. The 39-year-old cat owner, who wanted to remain anonymous, is owning a cat in a housing and development board HDB flat is currently illegal, works part-time as a delivery attendant in the day and is a bouncer at night, leaving him with little free time. While he is aware that sterilization has many benefits, the cost of the procedure is also a concern as he tries to use more affordable methods to care for his cats, such as buying cat food in Jehol Boru and cat-proofing his gate with corrugated board from his workplace. Mr. Shek is one of many cat owners who know that looking after pets is not just a labor of love. It also involves mindful financial planning and consideration for neighbors, especially when living in an HDB environment where a ban on cat ownership has been in place for more than three decades. Ms. Shelby Doshi, a cat behavioral consultant, said that ensuring a proper standard of care is not cheap, as cat food can cost around two Singapore dollars, one US dollar and fifty cents per can, and she budgets around eight hundred Singapore dollars per month for her cats. When rehoming rescued cats, Ms. Doshi emphasizes the financial commitment of cat ownership to potential adoptees as even a basic dental procedure can range from 1,000 Singapore dollars to 1 Singapore dollar. 300. In Singapore, when you live in an HDB flat you have to share common property with your neighbours and must always be conscious to make a good living environment. Often, animals get the negative brunt of things because the owners themselves are not responsible, said Miss Doshi, 39. Mr. James Wong, who lives with 23 rescued cats in an executive masonette, has cabinets well stocked with medications for his rescue cats, many of which have health issues such as asthma or kidney disease that make it difficult for them to get adopted. He has also installed cat furniture such as vertical climbers, hammocks and scratching posts across his flat to keep his cats stimulated in an indoor environment as his felines are strictly indoor cats. Mr. Wong said that he has not received any complaints and is sure that some neighbours may not even know that he has cats. Similarly, 32-year-old marketing manager Kimberly Chan does her due diligence to mesh exits so her four cats do not escape. Unlike what people think, cats don't actually have nine lives. There are so many cases of cats falling and some even end up with broken limbs for the rest of their lives, she said. Miss Chan is unsure if her neighbors know that she has cats, since the felines are typically quiet and kept indoors. However, despite some owners' best efforts, several HDB residents told today that negative experiences with cats have left them hesitant or even averse to lifting the ban on pet cats. Miss Ravnita Elvianti, 51, who lives in the same block as Mr. Shack, has been scared of cats since she saw a cat sleeping on her pillow as a child. When a neighbor's cat perched on her shoe rack and vomited, she moved the rack indoors. Still, Miss Ravnita, who is a homemaker, does not mind that many of her neighbors own cats, which occasionally wander onto the corridor, as long as they do not enter her flat. Wealth manager Jordan Lim's family was alarmed when a stray cat wandered into his flat as they worried that it might dirty the flat or carry disease. However, Mr. Lim, 24, said this experience emphasized the need for legalizing ownership of cats in HDB flats to encourage more adoption of strays. He believes that it is a small portion of cat owners who do not look after their cats that cause nuisances in the neighborhood. Mr. Ashtan, 44, who is self-employed, has not been bothered by cats in his Tyong Borough estate as they do not freely roam.
Cats are fine in my opinion, as they are HDB friendly in size, don't make too much noise and clean up after themselves. He said. Other residents emphasized that allowing cats in HDB flats may inconvenience those who are afraid of cats. Ms. Jean Ko, who works in real estate and has a fear of cats since her childhood, said that having cats in HDB flats creates a very uncomfortable situation for those who are averse to such pets. For the 45-year-old, it is already stressful to see community cats on a daily basis and a legalization of cats in HDB flats, which could allow her neighbors to own cats would be too close for comfort. Additionally, Ms. D. Chan, who wishes to be anonymous due to the contentious nature of the debate on cat ownership, said that she feels there is a societal lack of understanding that not everyone is keen on legalizing cats in HDB flats. Although lifting the ban may be public-pleasing, the 49-year-old who works in marketing said cat owners may only be deterred from causing disamenities if harsher punishments are imposed on irresponsible owners. Since 1989, HDB dwellers have not been permitted to house pet cats, and offenders may be fined up to 4,000 Singapore dollars if found to have a pet cat in their flat under the Housing and Development Animals rules. While the ban on cats in flats has been the subject of heated perennial debate, HDB said it was put in place because cats are generally difficult to contain within the flat. When allowed to roam indiscriminately, they tend to shed fur and defecate or urinate in public areas and also make caterwauling sounds, which can inconvenience your neighbours. It added. Some members of the public have echoed these concerns about the potential disamenities of cats in HDB flats, such as dirty in common areas and noise pollution. On the other hand, animal welfare groups and cat owners have persistently advocated for a change in policy, pointing to irresponsible pet ownership as the primary cause of the behaviour which HDB cited for the ban. After the release of the results in May from a public consultation launched in 2022, Senior Minister of State for National Development Tan Kiat Howe announced on December 2 a proposed cat management framework by the National Park Sports Animal and Veterinary Service AVS. When implemented in the later part of 2024, the proposal will allow up to two cats in HDB flats and introduce mandatory licensing and microchipping for pet cats. Dr. Audrey Chime, Director of AVS, said the proposal is the result of many progressive steps in consultation with the public, as the issue is very dear to the hearts of a lot of people. It is a very intentional move to raise the standards of the industry. She added. The proposal follows AVS public consultation exercise on the framework which garnered over 30,000 responses from September to November last year. Close to 90% of respondents said cats are suitable pets. With most of them also supporting cats being kept as pets in HDB flats. The survey also found that over 80% agreed that pet cats should be microchipped and licensed as licensing could improve the health, welfare and traceability of cats. AVS also conducted focus group discussions this year with cat owners, non-cat owners, cat fosterers, animal welfare groups and veterinarians. For one animal welfare group, the Cat Welfare Society CWS, this cause has been the subject of over a decade of advocacy work. In 2012, CWS launched a pilot cat ownership project in Chungpang Estate where cat owners were allowed to keep their pets legally in their HDB flats, provided certain conditions were met. At the time, 90% of the 126 cat owners were found to be responsible. While the remaining 10% who did not heed the ownership guidelines perpetuated 90% of the cat-related issues in the estate. 
during door-to-door -door surveys conducted in 2022. CWS found that 90% of the HDB non-cat owners did not have concerns about their cat-owning neighbors and had not faced care-related inconveniences. In response to today's queries, HDB said it works with other agencies and animal welfare groups to engage flat owners after it receives complaints about unpermitted and irresponsible pet ownership in HDB flats. Over the past three years, the number of correlated feedback received by HDB from residents had gone down. HDB received around 1,900 cases in 2020, 1,500 cases in 2021 and 1. 300 complaints in 2022. A majority of the feedback received was related to disamenities caused by cats, such as defecating in common areas. Most cases were resolved after flat owners rehomed their cats, said HDB. HDB takes legal action against flat owners only as a last resort. Only two households have been fined since 2020 after failing to cooperate and rehome their cats, which caused disamenities. On what its future approach would be, HDB said it would continue to work with AVS on refining the framework before next year's launch. During a two-year transition period, cat owners can apply to license and keep all existing pet cats. All pet cats will have to be microchipped before they can be licensed. First-time licensed applicants will have to complete a free online responsible pet ownership course, which will cover topics such as basic pet care skills and responsible pet ownership in the four vernacular languages. It will be an offence to keep unlicensed pet cats after the transition period. AVS also said that owners will have to ensure that cats are kept in a safe environment and have taken reasonable steps to protect cats from indoor and outdoor hazards, such as installing barriers to prevent roaming and high-rise falls. House checks may be conducted to ensure pet cats are kept in proper condition and their welfare is not compromised. It also strongly encouraged the sterilization of pet cats as the procedure prevents unintended breeding and has health and behavioral benefits, such as reduced risk of some cancers and less inclination to roam and catty wall. To support low-income households, free sterilization and microchipping for pet cats will be rolled out under the Pet Cat Sterilization Support Program by AVS in 2024. For married cat owners and independent rescuers Iris Ng and then Yen Ring. The proposed cat management framework and legalization of cats in HDB flats bring some relief. Ms. Ng, 32, a sustainability manager, said she had always been conscious of the ban, which made their decision to adopt their cat very stressful. Since owning a cat in an HDB flat is not legal. If you upset your neighbor, it becomes something they can use against you. Added Mr. Dan, a 32-year-old researcher. The ban imposed other challenges, including difficulty in securing pet insurance as some insurers do not allow a cat owner's listed address to be an HDB flat and social concerns of being unable to openly establish a cat owner community in her neighborhood. Regardless of whether it's enforced or not, the fact that cat ownership in HDB is prohibited creates a sense of illegitimacy and erodes our sense of belonging as a home, said Miss Ng. She added that the mandatory responsible pet ownership course would also help to reach the masses who may not have encountered information from animal welfare groups. Miss Doshi said the ban reversal is long overdue and many cats are already living in HDB flats. And the proposed framework, though still needing areas for improvement, would be part of little steps to great progress. Mr. Lewis Ng, a member of Parliament for Ne Soon Group Representation Constituency, who in Parliament had advocated for allowing cats in HDB, told today that he was relieved by the new proposal, which he called a significant milestone.
I've spoken about this for so long because fundamentally it's a policy that doesn't make sense. The four reasons that HDB gives for the ban already apply to other animals. Mr. Ng added, we have this policy that everybody is violating, we allow it, almost like a status quo, so why not just change it? On the proposed changes, Ms. Vivian Chong, 53, said that despite having negative experiences with cats, she is amenable to the new policy if owners follow suggested practices like keeping cats indoors. However, the operation and administration executive is concerned that when the ban is lifted, cat owners, who typically maintain a low profile, may more openly let cats wander outside of the home and cause disamenities. While she feels the proposed framework is pretty comprehensive, Ms. Chong did it that without active policing of breaches of guidelines, the framework may only be good on paper. Ms. Arthi Sankar, Executive Director of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals SPC said that mandating the meshing of windows and gates, keeping cats strictly indoors and sterilization are other areas that could better ensure responsible cat ownership in flats. For some people like the cat rescuer James Wong, the cap of two is on the low end as cats are social animals. Many people who started out adopting a single cat from him average out at three or more cats after some time. And cat rescuers may have more. Mr. Wong, a 41-year-old senior finance manager who has rescued and rehomed many cats, is also concerned that the proposed cat will cut off the supply of good adopters who may hesitate to adopt another cat despite having the means. Both SPCA and CWS cited concerns over possible misunderstanding of the proposed threshold of two licensed cats. There is a risk that irresponsible cat owners with more than the proposed threshold number of cats might look to abandon or recklessly give their cats away without realizing they can get licenses for more than the threshold number of cats during the transition period, provided they are responsible. Said Ms. Tinuga Vijukuma, President of CWS. Data from surveys undertaken by CWS in the past two years show that a majority of HDB cat owners have one to three cats, and a more logical starting point would thus be three cats. She added, Since the proposal for private housing is to allow three cats or dogs or a combination of both, it would make sense to follow the same flexibility for public housing. It would also ensure that we do not have double standards between public and private housing. Ms. Tinuga also cited the need for a special license for critical groups, such as fosterers and caregivers, who take in cats that have been abused, neglected or abandoned. Agreeing, Ms. Arthi from SPCA said that a better threshold would have been three cats per household and a threshold that takes into consideration the floor space of an owner's home. Dr. Theo Boon Hon, Managing Partner and Veterinary Consultant at Vetrust Singapore Consulting and Solutions, said that a hard limit on cats per household is arbitrary, as the number of pets is only one factor in a larger equation in ensuring pets' welfare.